Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to this uh, session on environmental security in the Amazon, which is probably one of the most uh, heated topic uh, as far as environmental issues are concerned, not just from a security perspective, from also from various other perspectives. And I'm very happy to have one of my close friends to uh, speak about this topic who has a lot of experience of working in the area as well and talk about these issues in a in a more uh, 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 in a more deeper way. Uh, Dr. Veronica Kober Gonzalez. Thank you so much, Veronica, for joining us. Uh, so it's a uh, it's like a good evening for the participants from <laughs> India, and I know it's um, it's morning for you. So good morning, <laughs> Veronica. So just to give you a brief introduction uh, about Dr. Veronica, she is a professor at the Department of Economy and International Relations, uh, Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, she holds a PhD degree in international relations from University of Brasilia, a master degree in environmental law, and a master degree in political sociology both from the Federal University of Santa Catarina. Uh, she is a member of the research group on international system in the Anthropocene and global climate change. Her current research relates indigenous land rights in the Amazon, uh, 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 forest carbon credits and global climate change governance. And for that, she focuses on justice and uh, allocation, considering the contextual conditions of inequality and diversity in the region. Uh, so I'm very happy to have you, Veronica, and uh, now it's over to you to start the discussion. And like I mentioned, we are going to keep it informal. So if there are any questions from the student side, please raise your hands. And, you know, uh, uh, even if it's between the presentation, if that's fine with you, Verona Veronica, if that's fine. Yeah. So I will I will ask you now. I will request you to now share your presentation. Thank you so much. OK, let me. Share my presentation here. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Well, hello, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Veronica, and I would like to thank um, Professor Danashki uh, for this invitation. Uh, for me, it's a great, great pleasure to be talking to you. Um, I hope uh, we can have a, a, a discussion about, um, I mean, um, Amazon, um, because it's a um, theme that I love and I work with, and I would love to to hear your thoughts about it. Um, so thank you, Dana, for the, for the opportunity to talk about um, Brazilian environmental policy and stuff. And Dana asked me to talk about environmental security in in the Amazon, and I would like to start like um, by discussing how the Amazon deforestation is approaching a tipping point. So um, the degradation of the Amazon is a non-linear historical process, but in 2019, a strong anti-environmentalist rhetoric combined with this explicit incentive to non-compliance of environmental law in Brazil has incentive predatory and criminal mining, public land uh, grabbing, deforestation and violence against indigenous um, communities and local populations um, in the Amazon. And as you are aware, uh, Brazil's share of uh, global carbon emissions, mega biodiversity, large population and significant economy uh, characters characterize it as a relevant actor in global environmental politics alone or align with, for example, basic group and stuff. And the country has the power to harm the Earth system and may be an important pusher for innovative answers to challenge posed by the Anthropocene. So, um, this is why I invite you to, to think um, about some of the causes and consequences of the Amazon deforestations and the political implications of that. Okay, so I, I don't know um, how much do you know about the Amazon, but this is, I mean, just to, to contextualize, the Amazon is a huge rainforest uh, in the north of Brazil. I am I don't know how I can show it, but I'm here like in the um, 
extreme south of Brazil, so it's far, far away. And um, the Amazon encompasses nine Brazilian states and other eight um, countries. And deforestation uh, rates have been rising in all of the Amazon, not only in Brazil, but especially in Brazil, as you can see in this chart, okay? So like in 2002 and like here in 2019, so we can see um, the, the, those rate, uh, the rates are uh, rising uh, extremely. So why? That, that's one question. And what are the domestic and international political implications of that, of the deforestation uh, rises? And to, to do so, to discuss with you that, um, I'll try to explore uh, three points. Um, first, um, to talk about a, a little bit about deforestation and environmental impacts. And to do that, I'll focus on domestic implications and causes and consequences. Then to talk a little bit about this North and South debate. And so the, to, to think about the, the Amazon deforestation by uh, the, I mean, like an international perspective or a foreign, foreign policy perspective. And then finally, to talk a little bit about the, what's um, um, beyond a state-centric perspective about this debate, to think about deforestation, deforestation in a non-state-centric perspective. So to think about territory and conflicts. And please, you should interrupt me at any time you want, if it, especially if it's not clear. I mean, English is not my first language, so please do. OK, so first about um, deforestation and uh, environmental impacts. Again, as you know, one of the main problems in the Amazon is um, deforestation. It affects Bra Brazilian environmental policy. It affects Brazilian foreign policy uh, and also um, affects global environmental politics. I mean, to, to understand, for example, the role of Brazil in global environmental politics, to understand the role of Brazil in climate negotiations, it's fundamental to, to, to understand how Brazil relates to the Amazon and especially to deforestation. Um, and it, as it, done, it does not affect directly the majority of Brazilian population, um, the rest of Brazil is kind of uh, backwards to the north of, of the, the region. So uh, this is why it's uh, for, for us, I mean, in Brazil, it's extremely important to, to talk about and to understand Brazilian deforestation, because in some sense, it's it's um, really distance. It's far away from from our uh, our um, domestic problems, which I know it's kind of awkward, but it is. It's the way things are. Okay, so here this figure um, lists the main drivers and consequences of deforestation. I won't talk about all of them. I just want to 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 show um, that. The main drivers of deforestations in Brazil, in the Amazon region, are land use and agriculture. I mean, soy and uh, pasture and mining and hydroelectric dams and roads. And if we could um, summarize all these drivers, we could say development, development and integration with the Brazilian economy. So. Uh, hydroelectric dams and roads and, and even mining and agriculture, they are like, um, they summarize this idea of development. And um, as I said before, if the Brazilian society um, is kind of backwards to the region, the way uh, to integrate them, um, as especially our politicians, um, they see it, is by uh, by developing this this kind of, of um, economy. So um, especially mining and agriculture, and so and urban areas of the north region of Brazil. So the urban areas which exist um, in the Amazon, they desire and they support this model of development. And it's important because they uh, usually have the, the, the local elites. Uh, they are really influential in, in Brazilian policy. And 
about so these are the main drivers of deforestation and if if we think about the consequences of deforestation in the in the region uh, we could like um, we have like local consequences, for example, land use conflicts as one of the, the main uh, consequence of deforestation and migration as an important, um, uh, an important consequence of deforestation and flooding and water pollution. So I, um, this, I mean, I would stress as, as very important local and again, uh, maybe in, invisible consequences of deforestation um, if, if we think in an, another scale. Uh, in a different scale as global consequences for deforestation, we would uh, put like climate change and biodiversity loss and less rain and then this um, starts um, um, showing some implications for the rest of Brazil. For example, São Paulo, which is a huge state in Brazil, I mean, with um, the um, biggest population. And so uh, we, if we have um, less rain because of um, deforestation in the Amazon, we have like um, uh, problems uh, with um, uh, with water in the, in the biggest population. Um, population area in Brazil. So um, we have like more diseases and desertification process. So this would be like in a, in a global um, scale. And this is um, something I would, I mean, I would love to, to discuss with you about this local and global consequences. And um, they are not really um, um, comprehended, um, like um, attached. And sometimes um, because, for example, um, um, the, 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 the main uh, decisors in, in Brazil are not in the North region, these local consequences are not really um, taken um, really serious. So, let me... Okay, this uh, chart um, shows deforestation uh, rates uh, over the years. So it starts on 1996, and uh, I mean, the, the, the rates are high no? about the Brazilian Amazon deforestation. And here in, in the, the green part, um, things um, started, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's the highest, okay, but things started uh, to change. Why? Uh, because of this um, um, Brazilian investment in the deforestation control. So we have like this action plan for the prevention and control of deforestation in the legal Amazon, which is the name of the program. And it started in two, 2004. And then, as you can see, it had um, a, a huge impact. On, on deforestation control, um, but again in 2016 uh, we start to see the numbers um, up again, and now I mean in 2021 we have um, the the highest uh, records in the decade because I mean the, the reasons um, and that's one of the things I would like to, us to to think about. So uh, as we see this chart. Um, um, for a long time, um, the public opinion, the politicians, and even the academia share this idea that it's a natural process, it's inevitable, I mean, it's development, I, I, we can stop deforestation, because we have to, to change, um, I mean, uh, we have to, to be able to explore those resources, and so, um, so for example, roads, electricity, um, university, hospitals, if we want to, to bring that uh, to, 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 the, to the region, I mean, we must have like this rate, it's, it's, um, it's inevitable. But then in 2000, 2004, uh, when things apparently started uh, changing, I mean, it dropped it, uh, how? Um, with investment in policies, especially in control policies. So this program, um, it, uh, the, this action plan for prevention and control of deforestation in the legal Amazon, it, it showed that, shows that um, a different way of relating to the forest um, is possible or not, I mean, because it rises again. So um, this is, I mean, in another, um, 
way of showing the same thing. Between 2005 and 2009, the annual deforestation rates in the Amazon dropped almost 80% because of that direction plan that I mentioned. Um, and in 2014, um, because of our economic and political crisis, uh, the budget for the national environmental agencies and scientific research have been cut and so this action plan uh, had also uh, suffered uh, this this cuts and things got uh, pretty bad in 2019 because as i said this strong anti-environmentalist rhetoric uh, has um i mean has um in a way um made things worse than it than uh, they were in 2014. And um, there is this um, this um, work of um, Eduardo Viola and Matias uh, Franchini, and they um, discuss a little bit about uh, these uh, three types of conservative behaviors uh, regarding the Amazon and, and what they call the Amazon disorders in the mindset of the Brazilian elites. And I would like to, to point who are the, the um, these actors that, that form this Brazilian elites. Uh, I would put them the ruralist caucus on the Brazilian Congress. Uh, the military forces, the military forces in Brazil, are, are, um, uh, I mean, a, a strong presence in the Amazon, and especially in this, um, uh, how, in the, the construction of this rhetoric about how Brazilians understand and the Amazon and how it, uh, it it's expressed, for example, uh, with um, uh, with in in our foreign minister. So um, this is at, if I said that in 2019 uh, things got really bad. I mean, not only rhetorically, but as you can see also in that chart, um, it's also oh, okay. Are you there? I don't know yes. what happened. I don't see my screen anymore. <laughs> Let okay. Me find. Um, um, I, I, can you I'm, see my? Yeah, I'm able to see the screen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you? It's okay for you? It's it's. No, now it's gone. Ah. <laughs> Do you want to share it uh, once again? Yes. I don't yeah. know what happened. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Yes. We are yeah. back. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, who is this? Um, who, who forms this Brazilian elites, right? Um, and I know I'm saying that military forces are are really are an important part of it. So when we see like the numbers with Bolsonaro government um, for, for example, 2019, that OK, things are, are bad at the moment, but it's not like something that he invented by himself. I mean, uh, he, he, he has support on these visions, on this anti-environmentalist politics and considering especially the Amazon with this idea of um, to development, to, to develop the region, uh, we must um, um, colonize the region and integrate into Brazilian society by, for example, um, um, changing the way indigenous people live in the forest because this is like comprehended as a, a primitive way and all this rhetoric that I, um, I think you prob probably heard um, about it and, and read about it. Uh, this is this is not something he invented. And for me, it's important to, to stress that. I mean, he, he has support on this idea uh, and support not only, uh, for example, uh, with the agribusiness um, 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 elite, but also and, and not only in the Brazilian Congress, like our deputies and senators, but also in our military forces. And and it's hard and it's not that uh, I mean, it's not that um, that simple to to even to um, to say that uh, I mean in, in public. But um, so 
um, um, Viola and Franchini, uh, they call this Amazon disorders and they, they, they divide them in three types. The first one is um, the Amazon paranoia. And they say, well, the region and its resources are desired by the developed North, particularly, particularly United States and Europe. So uh, Brazilian geopolitical thinkers first elaborated this idea, this Amazon paranoia that the, the, the region and, and its, its resources are going to be stowed and stuff. His, they say it's like in the World War II. Um, and the military presence in the Amazon, like in this colonization programs uh, and this um, um, sovereignty uh, rhetoric um, that, that, that is stressed, like our land, our resources, we must inter integrate them. And they say this disorder developed within the military at the first peak of international criticism of Brazil for its deforestation activities, um, and especially in 19, um, 1988, um, it was a way of finding a new core mission for the military forces after the end of the, our military regime. So in 1988, we had to do something with our military forces. And one good idea was to send them to the Amazon because it would be important to to control the territory and to like to provide security in the frontiers and stuff. So uh, it, it would help uh, to defend the Amazon from the American and European greed. That's the, the Amazon paranoia. And for me, it's like uh, this it's still there and, and, and it causes great impact in our politics today. Uh, so the second one is the Amazon impotence. This deep feeling uh, among members of Brazilian society and Brazilian authorities that deforestation was unstoppable because it has been a core future, uh, feature of Brazilian development since colonial times. So this, this Amazon impot impotence is there, as I said, when, when you see that chart and we see, for example, when uh, rates are rising, uh, deforestation rates are rising again and you say, oh, OK. I mean, it's not shocking. Uh, it's expected. I mean, we, we can't control. It's too. It's too huge. Uh, the Amazon is too large. I mean, so, and uh, and if we want to develop the region, I mean, some trees will have to be cut. And this third uh, Amazon disorder, like the Amazon neglect. It is, it's um, really near this idea of Amazon impotence. It's like the notion that even when deforestation control in the region is possible and practically without economical costs, it's not a really a policy priority. Why? Because it's so far away. I mean, uh, it, it, it's the north of Brazil. It, it's kind of a, a different country. It's um, um, most um, part of the population have never been there because it's really expensive to travel um, um, to to the Amazon. Even for us, like an airplane ticket, it, it's expensive and um, it's kind of uh, impossible to go uh, in other ways because we don't have trains and we actually don't have uh, too many roads to, to go there. So it... Um, it's not really that important, you see. So this uh, three types, uh, I'm sorry uh, <laughs> if they are not uh, really glorious about my country, but th this three types of conservative behaviors regarding the Amazon, they are, uh, um, they, they are still um, there, I mean, in the political debate and special, especially this Amazon paranoia. Um, so, um, if we focus on this Amazon paranoia uh, and this discourses, um, that approach of a narrative of a North versus South division um, of, um, I mean, and this is especially how um, the way the debate is framed in the Bolsonaro's government. And this is why the Amazon is back on the news. I mean, this North and South division uh, with um, us in the South uh, claiming like um, sovereignty and self-determination, but 
the roots of this uh, of this idea is this Amazon paranoia. So uh, sovereignty over our territories, our resources, and to understand um, Brazilian foreign policy, uh, especially in the climate regime, it's fundamental to take into account this Amazon paranoia. And the Brazilian federal government historical position over the Amazon um, is this. No foreign government or any other actor is allowed to interfere in the Amazon territory or the political decisions about how to manage and explore it. So this, um, I, I mean, if we think about uh, our, our role in international environmental politics, um, this idea that we don't uh, want to discuss how to manage the, the Amazon, I mean, it, it's um, it's kind of a blocker in, in decisions. And since the beginning of the environmental regime, Brazil positioning in relation to environmental issues was allied, uh, aligned with the right of development claim and this historical responsibilities uh, over uh, of North countries. And in the climate regime, as you know, it has been an advocate of the um, common but different responsibilities, hardest interpretations. And both of these um, positionings, uh, they have to do with uh, the Amazon and the way uh, we don't want to, to, I mean, because of that Amazon paranoia, we don't want to lose control um, about it. So the most sensitive uh, issue of Brazilian environmental policy is related to the Amazon. Um, Brazil has refused to debate forest protections obligations. Okay, things had changed in a, I mean, like in the last decade for a while, but the, this, this idea, this paranoia, it, it's, uh, it has always been there and it didn't um, go away. Um, and in the climate regime, the Brazilian negoci negotiation position is related to the government's su success in controlling deforestation. So as you see, um, if you compare, for example, how uh, Brazil, um, um, I mean, the role of Brazil in climate regime, um, when we decided to take, for example, um, obligations or to, to have um, like commitments, um, it's really connected um, with um, in the chart that period that we had uh, control the deforestation. When we control deforestation, we kind of we feel it's okay to to commit uh, with something in the climate regime. When things are bad, I mean, when we are not uh, controlling deforestation, and this is not like again we control or not deforestation because of uh, political decisions. Okay, so when because of political decisions we decide not to control deforestation. Uh, we change our um, our position in, in the climate regime. Um, okay. Oh, I lost you again. Do you see my presentation? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know why, but uh, I'll continue. Um, so as I always say, I was saying specifically between. 2008 and 2010, Brazil entered a period of, I would call climate activism, establishing a diverse set of mitigation policies at the domestic level. Um, the country launched the first national climate change plan in 2008, establishing some sectoral targets con uh, convergent with emission reductions, particularly in the area of controlling deforestation. So as part of Brazil measures to achieve targets, um, our national um, policy on climate change established in 2009, committed to reducing deforestation rates in the Amazon by 80% by 2020. So um, in 2010, President Lula passed this national climate law, which was the first of, um, of its kind among non-Annex I democracies, uh, which received a strong support during its passage on Congress. So we were like um, open um, to, to, to contribute to the climate regime uh, because uh, we were um, being able to control um, deforestation. Um, so, um, 
considering climate change, Brazilian domestic politics over the Amazon and over deforestation from 2008 to 2014 period allowed a more progressive position in the international climate regime. Um, because of the political changes in Brazil and because of the decision uh, not to take uh, seriously our environmental policy anymore, we had um, these uh, this, uh, deforestation rates rising again. And for example, the 2020 deforestation rate is uh, 182% higher than the established target um, and represents a reduction of only 44% instead of the 80% established in law. So Brazil has clearly failed in its bold intention to reduce deforestation rates. And I mean, this is a political decision and it has all to do uh, with the way uh, the Brazilian government um, I mean, uh, relates to the Amazon and to, to its environmental policy. Um, so, because of these rates, and I mean the, the pictures that are in the, the news and stuff, Brazil is under a national and international pressure to reestablish control of, of illegal activities in the Amazon. At the international level, um, the Organization of, of Economic Cooperation and Development, the European Union, I mean, among other acts, actors have expressed their concerns with the climbing of deforestation in the region. And um, I selected this, um, I mean, Twitter debate um, to, to illustrate uh, how things, uh, maybe one part of, of how this debate is, uh, is those, for example, Bolsonaro, since he, he um, uh, has been elected, he has proclaimed this old sovereignistic rhetoric about the Amazon and especially about the idea of Amazon paranoia, the idea that the Amazon is our, ours, not yours. And he put in practice uh, this dismantlement of environmental aid agencies and stuff. And, and his answer to, to this uh, international pressure is like, okay, this tweet, I, I would try to translate to you. It's like the Brazilian government is open to dialogue based on objective data and mutual respect. The French president's suggestion, I mean, he was answering uh, Emmanuel Macron tweet, um, that the Amazonian issues should be uh, should discuss at G7 uh, without the participation of the Amazonian countries evoke a misplaced colonialist mentality in the 21st century. So if Macron uh, to, to talk about um, um, to, uh, the control of illegal activities in the Amazon and, and to criticize Brazil for deforestation, he mentioned like our house is burning, our house. The Amazon is burning. The Amazon uh, represents, like, I mean, the lungs of the world. Uh, the Amazon rainforest, the lungs which produces 20% of our planet oxygen, is on fire. It's an international crisis, and we should do something. To answer to that, um, Bolsonaro claims that it's like a, a colonial mentality which is really interesting because it's not like his, um, his uh, way of positioning himself, himself in other areas. As I mean, I, I think it's clear that Bolsonaro is really close, for example, to, to the American government and especially when, when it was with Trump. So this, this um, when he talks about this colonialist mentality, uh, he's accessing that Amazon paranoia, uh, even if it's not really um, clear combined with um, his foreign policy today. So on one side, there is this nationalist defense of the right to exploration and the refuse to open the debate about the transnational impacts of forest destruction. OK, this is Bolsonaro. But on the other side, um, discourses that resemble a colonialist perspective of the control of South territories. I mean, is that it? Even if it's for the preservation of the environment, what is this preservation? For who? 
um, for whom? Uh, this idea of lungs of the world, lungs for, for whom? Um, for preservate the Amazon for compensate um, others' carbon emissions. These discourses usually associate a rhetoric of preservations of the lung of the world with the maintenance of trade and exploitations of resources by transnational corpor um, corporations, which collabor collaborates to maintenance of economic disparities among countries. So maybe beyond this dichotomist perspectives in rhetorics, north versus south, uh, are there other ways uh, to understand differently uh, the Amazon in global environmental politics. What is wrong with both perspectives and what do they let escape? I mean, they are both really important to understand, in my opinion, global env environmental politics nowadays. Uh, to, to discuss, I mean, development is a, a, a it, it is still a, a global south um, um, concern, and, and it's important that we address that. And and I mean, the, if we divide that, like the global north is not that interest in discussing things in these terms. And when uh, we react, um, like claiming um, um, self-determination and, for example, um, accusing this, this colonial perspective. I mean, even if it's Bolsonaro, do you see? I, I'm not sure um, it, um, if that, what's the sense of that? I'll try again in another. So uh, this North and South division is a normati normative trap. It is. Um, both um, are part of the same logic. They are. Uh, but it's important to understand this normative trap and uh, the same logic and, I mean, to, to think um, beyond that. For example, much of the degradation of the environment on the South um, was and still is financed by Northern countries. And, OK, I'm talking about the Amazon, uh, which are still the destiny of primary exportation as wood, grains, mineral, etc. So 90% uh, of all soil uh, consumed in European um, Union countries come from Brazil and 10% of all Brazilian beef is destined for European Union. And this is just, of course, an example, but uh, how things are tied and how and if we go back here to 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 this uh, Twitter um, uh, fight, um, this are, this is not um, um, this is not here, right? So another alternative involve um, answer involve recognizing the limits of the sovereignty approach to deal with the, this global environmental change. So. Um, what is to what does it mean to protect the Amazon and the idea of protecting um, what is to protect and f for whom um, in this north and south um, dispute uh, is it about um, resources is about um, I mean on the one hand if we see like it's for development sovereignty development on the other hand if we go to the the Macron perspective. Uh, is it for climate stability, for forest and as carbon stocks, like as the lung of the world? Um, this is also a dangerous way uh, to, 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 to look uh, to the forest and to understand the forest. It's, it opens like um, 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 to, to a different kind of, of um, perspective that it's um, not um, necessarily um, 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 representative of the, the diverse interest in the region. I'll try to, to show this with an example. Um, this is from an article, I'll, I'll show you the author um, in the next slide, slide, but he says, do states have the right or even the obligation to intervene in a foreign country in order to prevent it from causing irreversible and possible catastrophic harm to the environment? 
So in this state-centered state perspective, in a world of sovereign states, each is going to do what it must to protect its interests. So Macron versus Bolsonaro, uh, they would be just like protecting their own interests. And then the lungs of the world and uh, climate stability, um, it's um, a, an important um, um, label um, to to legitimize and um, intervene in a foreign country to pre prevent from cause, causing irre irreversible um, harm. Um, I'm not saying this is um, um, wrong or something, but it's like it's one one of the arguments that that are there. I mean, and it's at least isn't complete. So, okay, it was Stephen Watt who wrote that article, Who Will Save the Amazon and How? And it's really a, a really provocative article because it goes directly with that Amazon paranoia, um, I mean, uh, idea that, for example, our military forces um, share this realist state-centric perspective that climate change is a, th a threat, the Amazon forest is a huge stock of carbon. If Brazil cannot protect it, maybe some great power should intervene. And what even sits um, the responsibility to protect doctrine to, to discuss this idea. And one, one of the problems of um, Walt argument is maybe that it, it does not consider the causes of deforestations, which involve, as, as I briefly mentioned, um, this the same great powers. It does not consider the main emitters uh, who have historically burned fossil fuels. I mean, it's not about the environment anymore, maybe. So why do Global South governors, representatives evoke notions as sovereignty and nationalism in order to defend their territory and their right to exploit it? And why do Global North governors, representatives evoke notions as the lung of the world and the global relevance of the forest preservation and what is wrong with both perspectives? And what do they let escape? And beyond this dichotomist perspectives, um, are there other ways to understand differently the Amazon in global environmental politics? I think I'm, I'm in interested in discussing that with you, if you want to. For example, this idea of the Amazon preservation it's not about preservation of paysage, of water resources to local communities. Do you remember that first figure? I mean, it's not about local impacts. Uh, it's not about the, the local relevance. Um, it's about its global relevance. I mean, it's about the maintenance of a climate equilibrium of the lungs of, of the world, of the carbon stock. And I mean, as Donna mentioned, as I study uh, carbon offsets from um, uh, aviation emissions. And I mean, if, if we look to the Amazon as a huge carbon stock for aviation emissions in a global uh, scale, it, may, it, prob it can probably make some sense. So people have to fly and we have to compensate that. But in a local scale, uh, what's the meaning of that? I mean, that's that's my point. Um, very brief. I don't know how much time do I have to know. Let me. I forgot to look. Okay, and I talked too much. But um, just very briefly, um, this um, this report uh, by the expert group of International Military Council on Climate and Security. They 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 are also, uh, I mean, um, in a sovereign perspective, but, but they are highlighting some of the problems of uh, the Amazon deforestation to not only local communities, but to, uh, I mean, in a national perspective, which is kind of interesting because they are saying, okay, if Brazil has um, its um, 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 energy sector based on electricity um, and hydropower, if uh, you deforestate the Amazon, 
you have uh, a problem with um, lack of um, energy sources. Um, if you, um, for example, um, deforestate, you may have problem with sea level rises and most part of the population live um, near the sea. So it's a different um, kind of, of argument, but they are not looking to the local impacts, they are looking to the like in a, um, national impacts of that and calling uh, for, for um, actions to combat um, climate change. But again, in my opinion, if we want to understand um, the, the impacts of deforestation, um, we should take into account this global, this national, but also uh, this local impact. And that's why I'll briefly mention uh, this third part, which is territory and conflict, which is the debate over the Amazon is also not only, but also the debate about the territory, about the meanings of the territory, about what to do uh, with the territory. So it's di in different scales, it means different things and how um, they are uh, framed. Um, I mean, it has um, very important political impacts. So for example, uh, Marina Silva, which is a former environmental minister, she said, Forests are not just statistics, not just objects of negotiations, political disputes, uh, theses, ambitions, mooring, I would put uh, carbon stocks. For, uh, first of all, they are forests, a complex and creative life system. They have culture, spirituality, economy, infrastructure, people, laws, science and technology. It's a, such a strong identity that it remains a kind of radar imbued with perceptions, eyes, feelings, as far one goes, as much one learns, knows and admires things from the rest of the world. So um, maybe this, uh, in a state-centered perspective, uh, to, to understand causes and consequences of deforestations and how to deal with that, um, that uh, other explanations, including that paranoia, they, they leave um, um, that behind. I mean, th this other ways of understanding uh, forest and what we are missing with deforestation. For example, for the Yanomami, the word for nature is forest and the forest is their word. So their knowledge system speaks of dreams, spirits, animals and other beings associated with the land and they see themselves as one among many of the peoples and entities um, on the forests. And this um, state-centric perspective cannot take into account this pluriversity of worlds in the Amazon. Um, so this idea of how to preserve the Amazon, um, they, they can take uh, this into account. Uh, not the development perspective and not the carbon stock perspective. And if self-determination uh, means something, we should start listening to those who, who live in the forest. Okay, I guess I'll stop here. Okay, yeah, thank you, Veronica. That was great. Uh, you went a little over time, but that's fine because I think uh, there was a lot of ground to cover. So I, I think uh, it was important that you covered those aspects as well. And in fact, uh, in fact, one of the questions that came from a student was about the indigenous communities. I mean, she just, uh, you know, sent me a message uh, privately, like, uh, what about the indigenous communities and, uh, you know, uh, and about the conflicts that are associated with them. So, so I told her that it's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad you were able to cover that part as well. So I'll probably just um, invite uh, questions. There are quite a few hands up. Uh, first of all, it's my colleague Anand. Uh, he would. Uh, he's a faculty also at the department, so he is also joined the. Okay, he's somewhere outside, I think. Okay, Anand, go ahead. So uh, my question, uh, obrigado, Veronica, for that uh, good, uh, very brilliant lecture. Uh, especially when you spoke about the various. Uh, uh, types of narratives. I mean, that's something which I have not come across so far. Uh, that's a really good uh, value addition to my knowledge about uh, the Amazon. Uh, I, wa I wanted to ask, ask two questions. One is related to uh, the continuity 
in climate policy and Amazon protection uh, between these two regimes, that is the regime of uh, Lula and uh, Delma, uh, and uh, I mean, continuing through uh, Bolsonaro's regime. What is the continuity? Uh, is there any continuity in the protection of Amazon and in general about environmental protection? The second second question is again related to domestic politics. Uh, we know that uh, I mean COVID is a big uh, discussion point in Brazil, the management of COVID, uh, and corruption is always uh, an omnipresent issue. And uh, the Amazon issue uh, it was there before the COVID, but uh, after the COVID has come, whether for the next uh, uh, election campaigns how much priority will uh, the environmental issue gain? Or will it be restricted to COVID and uh, the usual business of uh, corruption? These are two of my questions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, these are great questions. Dana, do you want me to take more questions or to answer? You, it's you're the boss. Easy. You want no? to answer them one by one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe I'll answer so I won't forget it. I mean, I'm, I'm taking notes, but it's um, these are great questions. Um, about the continuity um, um, between Lula and Bolsonaro, um, so it's important to, to, to notice that between them, we had what some political analysts call uh, a coup. OK, because uh, after Lula, we had the, um, a, a, an elected president, uh, Dilma Rousseff, and she was um, uh, impeached. Um, and then like in 2016, as if you see that chart, it's kind of I mean, the things are related and the, the elite groups uh, that um, supported the impeachment. Um, they um, they are part of that um, elite that I mentioned, for example, uh, the, the ruralist caucus in the Congress and our agribusiness sectors. I mean, they were um, really unhappy, uh, for example, uh, with um, the, the participatory um, 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 policies for um, for example to include indigenous communities and how to to put limits on on our forest uh, law and stuff so it's really um, um, amazing to see uh, after 2016 how many uh, environmental um, uh, how many uh, uh, environmental uh, laws there are more flexible i mean to change you know, things that that were in in a way to to our um, agribusiness sector for example so it, it's uh, if we if we re relate the two things it's really clear how our environmental uh, our setback in environmental policy and how it helped us to explain uh, the, the impeachment of Dilma Rousseff. But um, especially uh, if you think about uh, our, our climate um, policy, so the, the Brazilian position in the climate regime, uh, I would not say that it's like um, because of the coup and because of deforestation, uh, it, it, it um, the Brazilian position is more, um, I mean, we are we are less cooperative in the climate regime. It, it, is, it is true, um, I mean, we are less cooperative in the climate regime, but at the same time, we have like civil society, we have like, um, I mean, other actors that are kind of um, putting pressure to, to, to um, for the implementation of climate law and even part of our agribusiness business sector, they are interested in us having in a, a, a better international role considering environmental policy. It, it's not good for business to see to Brazil to be seen as a pariah for those who want to export. So, I mean, if, if there are more interests involved uh, and um, you mentioned COVID and the next ele elections, and uh, I would love to to answer and to to believe that things are going to be different. But in my view, um, 
we won't have the discussion about the Amazon next election. I mean, it, it's not something that we discuss in our domestic politics. I, I mean, it's it's crazy, I know, but we don't. Because even uh, people, um, I mean, people who are not in the region and people, we believe in development and we don't have like a, a different, um, a, a, a different um, solution for yet for development that doesn't involve like mining and agribusiness and stuff. So we want to explore that. I mean, we, I, I do not, but we as Brazilian. So uh, it's not something that uh, it's organized in elections. I don't know. Yeah, okay. That, that's very pessimistic, but yeah, uh, I hope you are proven wrong. I mean, sitting outside Brazil, it looks like Amazon is like the most important issue in Brazil. But like you mentioned, uh, you know, there are other very uh, issues. There are other uh, priorities um, as far as the government and other actors are concerned. OK, I'll probably take two questions if that's OK with you, uh, you know, so that uh, if you want, you can just combine the answers also if you want. Yeah. Okay, uh, Teresa, go ahead. Hi, ma'am. That was an amazing presentation. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, you are. All right. Uh, so I have two questions, but um, if you want, you can choose to not answer as well. So the first one is regarding, you mentioned about Amazon paranoia, right? So uh, I wanted to know if, um, not if, it has been monetized a lot uh, in terms of uh, using it as an advertisement tactic for certain products. So people often, like sellers often say that a part of the proceeding goes for uh, reforestation efforts and all that. So do you think these kind of efforts take away from the legitimacy of the issue at some point? You want to ask a second question also so that she can answer them okay. together. Yeah. All right. The second one is about um, the contributions of indigenous women towards uh, reforestation efforts. Um, has there been any official acknowledgement by the Brazilian government? Because as far as I've searched, I couldn't find any. So do you think there is any acknowledgement? Those are my two questions. I'm sorry, uh, could you repeat the second one? Knowledge about what? About um, Acknowledging the pres uh, the efforts of indigenous women and their oh. contributions towards reforestation. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Donna, can I answer that? Yeah, yes, please. Okay. Um, I'll be even more uh, pessimistic now, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, these are great um, questions, um, really important, I mean, um, really important ones. Um, but the thing is, um, we in Brazil, um, as we have this anti indigenous colonial ideology and it is and indigenous group are not calling it in this way and it's important it's a form of racism that characterizes the brazilian society so we are not interested in indigenous communities and in the i know we see like um in the the products that we buy and maybe um in a um, in a series on tv sometimes we see them like indigenous groups as as a caricature of some type of life that that is really far away but they're Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat um, one common sense. Um, so please, it's not my opinion, um, but it's like a primitive way. Okay, it, it's it's they are not Brazilian in this sense. This is the 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 in anti-indigenous um, colonial ideology. So now we have like. Um, thousands of indigenous uh, people uh, at this moment in our capital and they are claiming against um, um, in indigenous rights setbacks, okay? They are uh, doing this really beautiful and important um, movement um, to, to, to their rights, um, to their rights over their territory. 
and it's not on the news. It's not something that we debate in Brazil. It's not like it's not on newspapers. I mean, uh, if I <laughs> and to explain why, maybe only with this uh, this anti-indigenous colonial ideology, we actually don't know all, uh, how to to deal um, with them. So uh, indigenous women, I mean, we're, we're not looking at their work and what they are doing sometimes. And one of my 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 slides was, was about that. Sometimes what we see is that indigenous communities, they are really good in keeping um, carbon uh, on on the ground because they they can contribute to 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 save forests and stuff. So uh, do you see we can um, see value um, on their way of life because of um, the the if their efficiency in in I mean taking care of the forest. Not because I mean they always live there. They have the right to live there. They have the self determination and. I mean, it, it's it's not on the debate. And in my opinion, um, because of, um, I mean, in, in that dichotomy, North versus South, not even the North uh, gets it right. I mean, <laughs> because they are not defending uh, this plural Plura, pluriversity of words in the Amazon. They are seen just like the, in this rational perspective. Um, I mean, it, it's good to have the, the lungs of the word. So um, we, the way we relate to, to uh, indigenous groups in the Amazon, and as we are part of the, this, the, the, this product goes to forests and stuff, I'm really suspicious about it because, uh, I, I mean, I always, always want to go and look in this specific project, what are the impacts? Which communities are involved, and uh, ha um, these communities have been heard. Um, because, as I said, when I work work with um, forest carbon uh, offsetting projects, um, usually uh, the the harms these projects um, cause uh, they are they are invisible in this different scale, like in this global scale or in this national scale. If you go uh, to to local scale, because of the size of the project, because of, um, I mean, the contract and how, how it's written, it, I mean, it's, um, I think, I'm not saying uh, we don't have like a very good, beautiful and, and pilot project in, in the Amazon that um, that is built with the communities and stuff, but, um, but I'm, I, I wouldn't take that for granted. Okay, strong words there once again. Um, okay, <laughs> uh, Aishwarya. Um, thank you, ma'am. That was really wonderful lecture. My, my question is regarding the point which you mentioned, the great power intervention. So my question is like, what's the response of the great powers as well as other countries with regard to this deforestation? Like you were talking about how these great powers would try to intervene into the Brazil. So I was thinking that it's basically the question of development. So is there any incentives given by these countries to Brazil so that they would stop this deforestation, like aid to their development so that they may not go for the deforestation? OK, can I can I take one more question if that's OK? Yeah, OK, Sharad, go ahead. Ma'am, I have one question. Like on the ground, like are there people like we had uh, like Brazil had famous and uh, like environmentalists like uh, I mean who fought on the ground for the right of indigenous and for protecting the Amazon like Chico Mendes. So on the ground, do we have any move, movement of such sort now at present? OK, yeah, Veronica. OK, thank you. Um, desire, I mean. Another great questions and um, about the first one, I was going to mention that, but I had to, I mean, cut some stuff. But it's a, uh, I would love to to discuss to to discuss that with you, to to think about that with you. And it's not like I'm not doing a statement here, okay? I'll just I'll try an explanation, and if and you can say if it makes sense or not, like. 
if we take that um, like periods, um, in that period um, in which we were able to control deforestation because of uh, that action plan, it, which was um, like in the Lula presidency and stuff, um, we, uh, how did Lula engage with other uh, actors, like with other, with the great powers, this it, great powers to, to um, I mean, considering the Amazon. Um, the idea was to, and the Amazon fund uh, is a is a, um, um, a product of that um, diplomacy. The idea was, if you want to help us um, here in the, I mean, to to control deforestation in the, in the Amazon, you should give us the money and trust that we are going to spend it on control deforestation. So, for example, from that period, we have like the satellites, which are we have two satellites that produce data about deforestation and it's really important i mean it's different from the other countries uh, in the region um, which also have deforestation but don't uh, they don't control like the methodology and how to so this is really important for the academia for scientists to um, to have uh, numbers and, and reliable numbers um, to to understand deforestation this is uh, one of the results of cooperation with other countries that um, uh, help us pay for 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 this. See, so the Amazon phone, for example, it's it's important that we have like, um, um, I mean, it, it's some form of cooperation that in a way help us to 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 strengthen our public policies. Um, over the this issue, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's one way of thinking. This is a state-centered perspective. Okay, I'm I'm still here. I'm still thinking about how states relate. I'm not saying how this would um, impact these local communities, but I do believe that um, control um, deforestation and um, like um, um, compliance of environmental law. These uh, things um, they 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 help. Uh, these indigenous communities, for example, they these indigenous communities, and I'll try to to go to this other um, um, question. Uh, thank you. Uh, this uh, we now in Brazil in 2021 have like um, a really organized uh, movement of indigenous people. Okay, they are really organized. Uh, it it does not um, um, it, it's not that they are able to change politics because I mean it's hard but they they are they are fighting since they won and for decades they they are there and they are denouncing uh, but at this moment I would say because of so, um, internet and because of international support and because of all this transnational. Um, actors that support the, these movements um, nowadays these indigenous communities uh, they are um, they are achieving some kind of um, I mean um, they, their point of view is being heard at least um, outside Brazil not in Brazil but outside Brazil it is which is kind of crazy I guess yeah I mean, actually, I was just reading this report today about environmental defenders. And Brazil is one of the countries with maximum number of environmental defenders being killed by military or government or or the or, or for that matter, all these, um, you know, transnational corporations and other other actors. So, yeah. OK, so Can I say something, we, Sure, but, sure. But, but, um, of what you said, um, usually in Brazil, uh, indigenous communities they are um, uh, framed as victims of the process. Mm -hmm. And as you said, like yes, um, they 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 are being killed. Uh, it's true, but they are being killed because they are fighting so hard and so much. I mean, they are in a very organized way resisting to mining and resisting to to land grabbing and 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 this is very important i mean if we want to see environmental justice it's really important to to i, I was discussing this in the earth system governance um and community uh, when we were ta talking about climate justice and i was saying maybe if you want to discuss climate justice 
we we should look to the ones who are resisting. These indigenous communities, they are, I mean, they are not victims, they are resisting really hard. And it's really important to, I mean, to acknowledge that. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So we have like, I mean, I have three questions from a student who, uh, Meghna, she worked on uh, politics of deforestation in Brazil, actually. Last year on a paper she worked on and she's not able to ask it directly because of some network issues. So she has just texted me those questions. So one question is about about the status of indigenous communities in the Brazilian constitution, especially under Bolsonaro. Is there any change in the way the indigenous communities are represented in the constitution of Brazil? The second question is about the red plus. I mean, you know, I, I guess, you know, this is one of the tools with which international cooperation has been sort of happening for some time. Uh, and so her question is, it's uh, according to her research, she finds that it is not as active today in the region compared to what it was, say, in the previous years. Uh, so, you know, does the politics of deforestation, you know, the kind of politics that is going on within these countries affect it? And um, and how does this affect the Amazon in the short term and long term? The third question is about Dilma Rousseff's stand on environmental issues. Uh, so again, according to her research, she found that there was a shift in her, in Dilma Rousseff's position on environmental issues in the second term, uh, you know, which became more pro-economic development. What was the reason for that? So these are the three questions. Oh my God, <laughs> these are really <laughs> difficult questions, um, but thank you so much. Okay, I'll try to. Uh, um, the first one about um, our constitution and our, um, I mean, this was uh, one of the papers I presented at this conference last week about how um, um, uh, this normative changes considering um, territorial rights of indigenous communities uh, because this is um, I mean this is, is the debate in Brazil if you want to uh, this is the debate that the indigenous communities are, are, are posing so it, we don't have um, a, um, a change in our constitution yet but we are going to. I mean, uh, they, that, that's why uh, we have these thousands of indigenous people uh, camping um, on the Congress at the moment. I mean, they are trying to resist to that and they are doing that like for weeks. Um, and, and this is part of the strategy of the other part. I mean, to, to, to get them tired of uh, camping there and, and go away. Um, and this will probably going to happen. Things are, um, I mean, we are trying to resist and to help them resist. Uh, we are trying to um, to, to talk to the de deputies and stuff, but um, I mean, they have, uh, there are too many um, part, too many actors interest um, in, in this to happen because um, this uh, indigenous rights um, and when we say, like, for example, the, the, the I mean, the, the indigenous rights over the territory and to maintain uh, the, the sovereignty over its territory, um, it's um, it's nowadays uh, the hugest um, barrier to, to exploitation, for example, of mining in these territories. In these territories are like, um, I mean, I, I can say in numbers, but um, it's um, it's really uh, profitable mining and so they really want to to open that and to to liberalize that so it, it will happen um sorry Dana, another bad news uh, about um red plus um we had like um like in the this uh gold period we had like um this um Veronica, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, just to interrupt you there. I mean, I don't think everybody knows what Red Plus is. So just to tell the students, this is like a mechanism introduced by the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. It's called reducing emissions from deforestation and forest de degradation. So basically where the Global North, what she was talking about, giving 
uh, finances to the global south to protect their forest. Uh, and this is happening all, all across you know, countries where, I mean, it's happening even in, there are projects even in India, uh, which are doing that, Brazil and you know, a lot of countries in Southeast Asia. So yeah, just to give a brief background, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt there. Yeah. No, thank you, Dana. It's, um, I mean, it's an, an important. Um, in Brazil, uh, we, I'll talk about and how indigenous communities, they express their concern over Red Plus. Uh, we have like indigenous group that, groups that um, see as a good opportunity to uh, have some money to keep forest on the ground and stuff. And we have like the um, this part of this or, organized part of the indigenous um, groups and movements that are aligned with social movements and they resist, contest, and I mean they they um, they they claim that Red Plus projects are a way of, in a way, um, 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 entering in the territory and redefining the uses of territory. One of my slides was, was about, uh, and uh, I can share with you if you are interested, was about the, the material and symbolic um, meanings and uses of territory. Red plus um, changes not only uh, the, the, this material sense of the territory, so what to do, uh, and if you, for example, can put fire or if you can um, I don't know, cultivate other stuff, so in, in this material sense, but also in the symbolic sense, how to, to understand the, the, the meaning and the, um, what's this territory um, 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 is about, I mean, uh, what's their interest, so um, it, it's, it's not coincident, uh, and it, it will never be coincident, so it's, there are always disputes over how to to use the territory and how to interpret the territory so and red plus it's like i mean I, i'm not pro or against I, I understand that there are the ones who resist because they they um they they see that it's um a, a possible way of changing um the way they, they they live in the territory i'm not sure but um one important thing um, if and maybe I'm an institutionalist, I don't know. Uh, besides this, um, this dispute uh, over Red Plus and considering especially those who are affected by these policies, um, one thing that um, for this brief period, like between um, 2008 to 2016, uh, was about regulation. Okay, if you want to uh, have Red Plus in Brazil, we should regulate that. We should have laws to 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 define uh, what's additionality and how, how to consultation and for how long will they and in which sense they will be able to interfere in this territory. So if we have laws uh, about it, it 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 maybe and for example, participatory councils to discuss some of these implications. This would help diminish the, the, the possible impacts of Red Plus. And um, this has, I mean, we were kind of um, structuring this Red Plus policy and now it's gone. I mean, since uh, 2019, we don't discuss Red Plus anymore uh, in a federal level. But sub-national um, governance in the Amazon, they are um, pushing this discussion. So, um, I mean, we have like now, nowadays in Brazil, we have like the federal government um, thinking in one way about forests and Red Plus and uh, sub-national governments of the Amazon align, for example, with California and I mean, with other uh, sub-national actors they are trying to build a, a different answer to Red Plus, but it's an incognito. And the third question I'll try to, to answer in more briefly way, I'm sorry, about uh, Dilma Rousseff's second uh, turn and what happened. Yes, it's <laughs> it's true and it's sad. Um, um, in the second um, term of Dilma Rousseff, uh, she was um, um, really weak in terms of um, um, 
policies support, I mean, which actors supported her, and she had to, to compromise uh, a lot of her, um, I mean, uh, uh, um, um, election agenda um, to, to, to stay uh, on power, and it didn't help her. So it's, it, it's, um, it, it, it was a difficult moment. Um, if we say that in the Lula presidency, things were a little bit more clear over environmental policy, uh, with Dilma Rousseff and the federal uh, code uh, on uh, forest is an example, which was signed um, on her um, uh, presidency, and it was a setback on environmental policy. Um, it was um, it, it's an, a reflection of Dilma um, trying to to I mean to negotiate with, for example, agribusiness in that moment to to maintain uh, their support. And it didn't uh, help her. Uh, and also, and this is uh, a little bit tricky, um, Dilma um, really believed, and I think she still does, uh, in development. I mean, um, so she is all in favor of hydropower plants. Um, she is. I mean, it's her way of, of because she is saying we must have, if we want to develop, when we should do um, without compromising the environment. But um, if we must um, take some trees, um, we should because it is important to, to development. So um, it's kind of different from, from that old period. But it, if we compare that to what we have now, it's like it was less environmental concern, and now it's more like an anti-environmental concern. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so, I mean, actually there are more questions, but I've asked them to contact you directly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if there are any questions, more questions to ask, you know, I hope you wouldn't mind if they, if they get in touch, especially because uh, at least one or two of them are interested in, um, as I told you, one of them uh, worked on this uh, politics of deforestation in Brazil. So she would be interested in getting in touch with you later on. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so we will wrap up the session now. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, you know, honestly, it was a great session. I enjoyed it thoroughly as always. And uh, it's always nice to hear perspectives from, you know, uh, from people who live there rather than us talking about what's going on, which is what most academics end up doing. Uh, so I'm very happy, you know, that you accepted uh, our invitation to speak and you you did a wonderful job covering such a vast gamut of issues, uh, you know, uh, ranging from all kinds of, you know, issues with deforestation, climate implications, different paradigms that exist in the on the issue of deforestation. So thank you so much, Veronica, for for doing this and for for uh, for also answering those questions very patiently because um, I mean there, there there were quite a lot of questions so uh, so I'm glad that you took your time out and waited patiently to answer all of them uh, yeah yeah so I would just like to thank you Dana and thank you uh, students <laughs> I mean um, thank you for your patience I I know I mean it's I, I love um, this theme, so I, I get like excited sometimes. So <laughs> thank you um, very much. And um, I would love to, to be in touch with you. Then I have my email. I'll send you my presentation. And in the final slide, there is my um, email. So please um, write to me. I would, I would love to, to stay in touch with you. OK? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And thank have a you. good day, at least for you <laughs> and the rest. Like, we will have a good evening, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye, Dana. Bye.